what our plan is to implement. Okay. I'll stand so everybody can hear me. I'm Chris Bronson. I'm the police chief. Um, I've been elected to look into this a little bit further. I don't really have a fight in this. Um, I've operated an ATV a couple times. I'm an avid snow dealer. I really enjoy motorcycling. Um, I drive one. So I kind of operate all of those things on the road at one time or another. Can everybody hear me? Yeah, okay. So what we did was is um, we've been asked to kind of put together a presentation. Um, and then afterwards, we'll do some questions and answers. Um, we'll try to answer the questions. Have some people here that belong to a, um, a New London ATV UTV club. Um, maybe they can help me answer a couple of the questions. Like I said, I'm not, by no means am I an expert <coughs> at this. Um, this is a law that came into effect in 2018, so it's relatively something new. We've got a lot of municipalities that are opening up. Um, my understanding is you can get all the way from Wapaka all the way to New London on an ATV, okay? So by opening them up, you have to go through a whole process. And our process is, I'm going to explain that to you a little bit so that you know where we're coming from. So in order for us to open up an, an ATV trail in, in Otagini here, we have to be, we have to approach the Otagini County um, Board, okay? The Otagini County Board has a specific ordinance, and with, on that ordinance, we have to meet all of the steps in order to do that. They also have regulations on their ordinance. One of their, um, one of their regulations that on their ordinance is that the speed limit is a maximum of 35 miles an hour, okay? So we've had a lot of questions when we've been looking through this about operating on 40 mile an hour roadways. Legally, Outagini County Board has only approved 35 mile an hour roadways. So anything up to 35 miles an hour, okay? The other things that, are, that we have to, we have to submit maps, um, we have to submit that we've had these types of meetings um, and, and let the public know, you know what, what's going on and what our intentions are. Um, once it's approved by the board, then what we have to do is we have to submit a map, we have to submit all the paperwork, we have to submit a letter stating that we'll be responsible for all the signage. We have to get the signage, we have to put the signage up. So we're at the early portion of the stage here yet. Um, so this is not like we have this meeting, we look at the 21st, and then all of a sudden on the 22nd we open up the trails, okay? So there's steps afterwards that we have to take care of. So the purpose of this ordinance is to establish a recreational all-terrain and utility ATV routes in the village of Hortonville and to regulate the operation of the ATVs in the village of Hortonville. So, <coughs> next slide. So the village of Hortonville um, has a specific ordinance or the authority to adopt the all-terrain and ATUV ordinance under 23.338B and 11. So, in 2017, Act 193 basically allowed municipalities to open up their roadways to ATVs for the use of recreational ATVs and UTVs. But basically what they said was, is when you open up this, when you open up the roadways, you have to make sure that you're posting signage so that people know when the trails start, when the trails end, which roads that they can go on, you know, things like that. So that's why we have to submit these maps to either the county to get approval to operate on any county road or the DOT to operate on Highway 15. So we have two different entities that we have to go to and request permission before we can actually do this and then get the approval from that. And then again, we're going to have to do the signage, which we opted to do because you can do one or two on the bottom there. And the next slide says, the signs must alert motorists that all highways within town, village, city, or county have been designated as an ATV road. And if they're not, if there's not a sign there, I mean, we don't have a whole lot of them. We would open up the entire village with the limits of we have a map and we'll show you where the, the ATV roads would end. This basically just talks about um, <coughs> any other additional signs that are up there. It's, it's just basically saying the whole thing, but it ends um, with what we had just spoke about. So in 2017, Act 
87 says that Wisconsin law enables cities, village, town officials to authorize ATV, UTV use on roads posted 35 miles an hour or less within their boundaries. This bill basically provided that cities, towns, villages may post a speed limit um, with this new one here. And this is a hot topic that we've been talking about. So to sum it up in a nutshell, so we have speed limit zones that are 45 miles an hour in the village, okay? Especially like from Wild Wind Subdivision to the industrial park on Double T, that's a 45 mile an hour zone. As of right now, we would not be able to legally allow ATVs to operate between there and there. The bypass, here's another example. So the bypass all the way out to the village limits. That's off limits because it's a 45 mile an hour speed limit. So what would have to happen is, is for us to be able to operate on those, the highway commissioner or whatever would take that to the county board level and the county board level would have to change their ordinance allowing them to operate on 45 mile an hour zones. Then we would be able to post them. But as of right now, we can only stop them where the 35 mile an hour ends. Another one would be Mystic over at the LEM. So right to the east of Mystic, it would end there. Um, Honeysuckle, which is a giveaway, it was a dead giveaway because that's our village limit. Um, and then the cemetery out by the industrial park. Okay. And then we've pretty much talked about this one. So there's copies on the table here, um, if anybody didn't see one, but it's a proposed ATV, um, UTV ordinance. Um, and then we'll have a route. But what we're doing is we're looking at, we, we've established is the route would be open from April 1st until November 15th. It would be open from 6 a.m. until 10 p.m. daily. And then here's a picture of the map, which we kind of discussed. David, did I miss any of them on there? Highway Double T, the where it's, the speed limit basically changes is that high that from the 45 to the 35 mile an hour zone is right on midway there. So they won't be able to go west uh, of uh, Double T from midway. Does that make sense? Did I miss any of them? No. Oh, Century Gilberts. We did miss one here. So Highway 15 with the speed and everything else, we kind of we, we looked at the speed limit changes to 25 there. So if we would still allow the ATVs and the UTVs to go to Gilberts. If you want to go get your groceries or whatever, and, and you'd be able to go there and then make it back into town. Okay? So the following slides are basically, they're taken from the 2021 Altering um, UTV Department of Natural Resources. And the first one's got some definitions here. Um, so we'll go into a little bit later about what really is it, what's classified as an ATV, what's classified as a UTV, the low speed vehicles, um, what's a highway, what, what does an operator mean, and what does it mean to operate. I think those are all pretty basic. Um, highway is actually any road, so it's just not highway, not highway M. It would be Nash Street, it would be Cedar Street, it would be any of those. And then there's a difference between a route and a trail, okay? I've been told by a lot of different organizations that make sure that you're classifying this as a route, okay? Because legally on a trail, if you're in a UTV, you can have your six pack cooler sitting next to you and you could be drinking them as you're going down the trail. Make sure you're not getting intoxicated because then that becomes a whole different thing. So we will not allow people to have open intoxicants in their UTVs or ATVs as they're driving from business to business. Okay? <coughs> so what is a UTV? So there's actually, there's 15 different things that classify it as a UTV. So UTV is any of the following. And I don't think I have to read them all. I'm hoping everybody can read them here, but 3,000.
And you have to have four or more tires, a steering wheel, tail lights, brakes, two headlamps. Um, it, UTVs have a seatbelt system um, to restrain the, the people in there, so they have to have them. Um, they have like a roll bar system, so if it rolls, um, and hopefully it protects them. Um, they have safety standards um, of a weight. They can only be so many inches wide. Um, the equipment with the seat designed to be straddled by the operator, um, and it travels on four or more tires. Three tired ATVs at this point um, we had talked about this in great detail, and um, at this point, we're not going to allow them on the building roads. So this is kind of cool. This is kind of a size comparison for some of the people who just came up at one of the meetings, and they, they were talking about, well, what's the difference between a smart car and a UTV? Can you kind of... There we go. So a UTV is actually bigger by looking at the picture than a smart car. <laughs> okay. And then if we scroll down a little bit, you can look at the motorcycles. So again, you get a motorcycle that's wider or longer than actually an ATV. And you have four tires on an ATV versus two tires on a motorcycle. <coughs> So the next we'll talk a little bit about registration display um, and then the rear registration. So there's strict guidelines that the state mandates that have to be with, with uh, the display of the decals. Okay, they gotta be in specific areas. So <coughs> when a driver is on an ATV, um, they can't be like tucked under something. They have to be accessible to an officer or somebody that's looking at the side of this while they're operating it, okay? So it's usually up right in the middle of the tanks or up on the side of the fenders, um, someplace in there, okay? Those are good for two years. It's what, 30 bucks to register your UTV for every two years. But then you have to have a rear registration also. So the next page tells you exactly what it has to be. It has to be a, a minimum of four inches high, seven and a half inches long. It has to have, it's got to be white, it's got to have letters on it, it's got to have, it actually has, it's just not letters that you just make and put on there. You can't put A, B, C, one, two, three, whatever on there. It's actually got the numbers from the stickers that are on there um, so that anybody that's following the vehicle is just kind of like a license plate. So if you have a reckless driver on a UTV or an ATV or whatever, you can get that information and we can figure out exactly who owns that piece of equipment. <coughs> That's it. This one here just talks about the, the price um, for um, public use of a UTV with the $30. General safety and certificate requirements. Um, we get a lot of people that have been asking us, these aren't really gonna apply to us all that much because we are not going to allow somebody under the age of 16 years old to operate an ATV or a UTV on our roads, okay? In order to operate on our roads, you have to be 16 years old and you must have a valid driver's license, okay? You have to have proof of insurance. So if you get stopped, you have to have show that you have that, but you also need to, if you were born prior to 1988, January 1st of 1988, you have to produce a safety certificate, okay? So does everybody know what that is, a safe, safety certificate? So anybody born before 1988, you have to take a course. So they do that. Yeah. After, 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 yeah, after, I'm sorry, yep, yeah, after, sorry. Um, you have to take <laughs> after before, <laughs> You have to, you have to um, you have to take this take the course, and then you have to make sure that you have that certificate on you. So they do that with snowmobiles too. There's different laws concerning UTVs. I always get this mixed up. So an ATV. Nobody under the age of 
12 can even operate one of those. Right, right? So the next one here is the village ordinance specifies that no person, a couple more here. There we go. And I just spoke about that no person under the age of 16 may operate a UTV on the roadway. The next slide is kind of cool. It talks about how many students in 2018. There's really nothing out there new. I look for how many students have been certified, you know, to from the, the safety course and stuff like that. I'm not finding anything. Um, but in 2018, there was 1,905 ATV students certified. There's a lot for boat, almost 8,000 for snowmobiles. So the helmet requirement, basically in a nutshell, is if you're under the age of 18, you have to have a helmet. Same with the motorcycle. Yep, same with the motorcycle. So um, if you're letting your 16-year-olds out there riding the ATV, UTVs, they have to have a helmet. And it's got to be a motorcycle helmet or, or a snowmobile helmet. It cannot be a bike helmet. Um, they have to have the DOT-approved sticker on the back from right. the manufacturer. Roadway restrictions that are make sure that you're checking with your local authorities regarding a local enacted ATV UTV ordinances, which may be more restrictive than state law. When you're operating on a roadway, you must use your hand signals. Okay. We had the conversation about with ATVs versus UTVs. Okay, most UTVs, I don't know of any that don't, have brake lights, headlights, tail lights. They have directionals? Some, uh, some of them come factory, but the majority of them do not. Okay. So nothing irritates me more than when I go up north and we're driving someplace and we're at a four-way stop and I got a UTV stating directly across from me and we're sitting there going, okay, which way are you going? I got my directional on to go left, but which way are you going? Okay. So hand signals are really important. However, we have people that work for our village here that are young and they don't know hand signals. Well, that's going to be a little bit of an issue too. So, <laughs> if you if you don't know hand signals, there are, I mean, I guess it's one of those things where you got to teach people how to use hand signals. I didn't call anybody out. <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot of young guys on PPW, except for Rob over there. Yeah. So, um, right. So you need to operate on the extreme right of the roadway. So the, the law basically states is anywhere between the center line and the white line, okay? So you must be traveling on the roadway. You can't have one tire in the gravel and the other one on the roadway. You gotta have, you gotta be to the, to the left of the fog line and not over the center line. You also must ride single file. Um, can't be passing each other as you're driving down the road. Um, you must have your headlamps and your tail lamps on at all times. Um, again, we're not allowing the, it says 12 to 15 year olds, but that's one of the laws, but we're not allowing them to operate on the road. So the next slide here talks about the equipment. And we as a law enforcement, we know that from the rear of the vehicle, you can have red or yellow, and from the front of the vehicle, you can have white or amber, okay? UTV, ATVs are a little bit different because they have some of the yellow, they even have some, I see that are white from the rear. I think that's, I don't know why, but I don't know if that would be, I can't think of anything. Can you help me with this one a little bit? Uh, typically, I've always seen them as red or amber. Yeah. Red or amber from the rear, yeah. right? Or white or amber from the front? Uh, yeah, white or amber from the front. Right. But most people do them as ambers. Great. You got to dim your lights. You got your brights on within 500 feet. 500 feet of coming onto oncoming traffic, just like everybody else. I mean, that's that's just regular law. Um, if you're operating at night, you got to make sure that your taillights working. Those types of things. One of the things that one of the board meetings that I listened to that was looking at adopting this ordinance was they were talking about these big huge light bars that these people put on front of their cars. Okay? So 
Those are illegal. Okay. <coughs> you can't you can't have them on. They're blinding to people. They're they're not a law a, allowed by law to have them. So they shouldn't be on that. They should be on the ATV UTV. They're for off road purpose only. Now the thing is, is you see these motorcycles that have the blue lights and the green lights and the purple lights and everything else underneath them. Those are all illegal. Okay. So you can't have those on your UTV or ATV either. You have them on when you're sitting in a parking lot because that looks cool. <coughs> Exhaust and noise restrictions. So every UTV, ATV that's operating must have an exhaust system that is basically came from the factory. Okay, it can't be modified. Just like a regular vehicle, you, you it's not legal to modify your exhaust on a regular vehicle or truck or anything like that. But then the big thing that they're talking about here is on the next slide, it, it has to have equipped with a spark a tester. And that basically, if somebody doesn't know what that is, it's so that wildfires and sparks are not emitted through the muffler system. It basically catches them before they go out and start fields on fire as they're driving down the road. Law enforcement penalties and counter violations. You can have fines anywhere from $150 to $2,000. Um, every ATV person that's operating on the road has to follow the same laws, state laws, local laws, as anybody else that's operating the car. So you can get picked up for drunk driving. There's stiffer penalties. There's um, more penalties for people who are operating a UTV while intoxicated. Um, as far as like the refusing and stuff like that, um, the penalties are greater for anybody that's operating a UTV while they're drinking and, and driving. Um, they can get it for speeding. So the next one shows the top 10 violations um, that the DNR had posted. The first one is operating without a registration. I'm not going to read them all, but that's probably the number one. Um, I kind of, we have access to go into our CAD system, which is our dispatch system. I kind of put New London in there because New London's got a, um, a, an ordinance, okay? And just to kind of see how many calls that they got in the last, last 12 months. And it was 15 calls. And most of them are four the operating with a valid Okay. The next ones are just a couple mm -hmm. slides that talk about recreational vehicles. <coughs> so in 2018, in 10 years, the number of ATVs registered increased by 121,000. The boats decreased by 12,000 and the snowmobiles declined by 30,000. But ATVs, the, the purchase of ATVs is just, just skyrocketing. And then this just talks about the fatality rates. Um, it just, the ATVs, which are the orange ones, they've just kind of held steady. Um, you know, like you said, there's not a whole lot to gauge off of because a lot of the roads opened up in 2018, so we're not saying that this percentage that you see on that graph is people who died on roads. I mean, a lot of them are, you know, ones that are dying on trails and things like that, so. And then, we don't currently have one, but it might be something that we could look at in the future if we would open, but there's snowmobile clubs out there, there's UTV clubs out there, um, <coughs> with the UTV clubs, there's called trail ambassadors, I mean there's bike trail ambassadors, there's ATV trail ambassadors, there's a lot of organizations that, you know, like to get together. And basically the ambassadors are people who, and normally you see them wearing vests and stuff like that, but they're basically, they're policing the people that are under UTVs. And if they see something, they're kind of going over and they're saying something to them. And they're letting them know that, you know what, we gotta, this is a privilege, okay? This is a privilege that we are being allowed to operate our UPVs on our road. So let's make sure that you behave. That's all I got. You want to open it up to questions? Yeah. We can open it up for let's questions. Let's do public comment first. Okay. Okay. Just yeah. to make sure we get public comment. Adam Dober. Mm -hmm. 
Association. Yes. Uh, my name is Adam Dahmer. Um, I'm from the city of New London. I'm with the uh, New London ATV Club as a member ambassador. Um, really, uh, I want to hear from the public first. I, if there's any questions or misconceptions, bad opinions, I generally like to clear the air on that because as uh, I've experienced doing presentations the last couple of years at different municipalities, a lot of people fear the unknown and have uh, sometimes a bad opinion of ATVs and UTVs. So I would just generally like to hear from the public and the board. If there's any questions, concerns, I'll address them last, if that's okay. Absolutely. All right, thank you. Thank you. Can we have Mike Gorski? Um, no. Nope. Okay. Then we have Judy Peterson. I'm uh, pretty good. I just want to say that I think it's a really good idea. It's going to bring a lot of business to our small businesses in the downtown market area. We really need that that bypass going through. Then we have uh, Lauren Steinecker. I'm Lauren Steinecker. Um, the only thing I really was looking at is for um, double M. We have a 50 feet after the Mystic to the Village Woods. I mean, we got a tent to a quarter mile up there to Ellington, and Ellington's open to ATVs. I don't know. And then people can get to the Supper Club to do that. I would say that's about the only thing I really saw that maybe get approval for that speed limit. Yeah, and that's, that's one of those things where I had spoke about the county board would have to change it at that level because there's municipalities out there that have signs up and they put 35 mile an hour signs in 45 mile an hour zones and the county's coming around and taking them down. Here we go. Then we have Arnold and Mary Wires. I guess our questions have been answered, but I think it's a good idea because all our surrounding communities have put the trails in place already and I think it's a good idea. Okay, then we have Roger Retzloff. I have no bad comments about it. In fact, I think we should be moving on faster to get this done with because it should have been done years ago. Really. Uh, the board goes behind on a lot of things. So, like Greenville, Liberty, London, Dale, all around us are already, they're already done. So I would say it's time to move ahead. <coughs> Then we have Cole Parker. I'm good. I think everything that I answered that I was thinking. Okay. Reed uh, Anderson, Lidderson? Yep, I'm good. You're good. Okay. So Blair. <laughs> Blaine, Blaine, probably. Blaine? Yeah. I was wondering, you were, you were talking about the board meeting for 45 to they got to meet so you can go on maybe what was it, our 45 miles an hour. How often does that happen where it's promoted that <coughs> one will open up the trails to that speed limit? Well, and I'm not sure. I had um, I had a conversation with um, Dean Steingraber, the highway commissioner, this past week. And um, and we, because we were talking about, I have to get permission <coughs> from him. He's the one that's going to grant the village permission to travel on on any of the county roads. Right. So double T, double M, M, you know, we have to get that permission from him. And then, so we were just kind of talking and I said, well, so this bill of, the Senate bill of 506, um, so I sent him that bill, because it's, it's very new, like it's March of 2022 that it came out. So I sent him that information. So, I mean, at that point, maybe he looks at it and, and you know, forwards it to the, the county board or, or brings up a meeting with the county board. Yeah. We're hoping so because we have some of the jurisdictions, you know, that can't get to, you know, can't get into the village. Wild Wind subdivision is right. huge and growing. Well, it'd be nice to be able to travel in between towns and everything. Well, but Portonia is not open. So The towns haven't been given permission either to yes. post right. those at 35. So Ellington technically is a violation by doing that. So, right. I mean, so you're looking down the road, it's probably be a while. Depending on what the county Yes, depending on what the county does. Right. Right. Thank you. And we have Kai, 
Kylie? Kylan? Thanks, sir. I ain't saying that just because I thought we had a sign up to be here, so I signed this full thought. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. One other question. What about access like to the Wyawash Trail or the railroad tracks down in? Well, the Wyawash Trail is off limits. Mm -hmm. So the Wyawash Trail doesn't allow, the only thing that they allow on there is horses and snowmobiles mm -hmm. and, and people walking. <coughs> so they don't allow UTV, ATVs on any of that. There's a Newton Blackmore Trail out of Green London that goes mm -hmm. all the way to Green Bay. They don't allow them on there either. It would have to be the colony or somebody that would have to pass. It would have to be the <coughs> local ATV, UTV, yeah. probably organizations, clubs and stuff like that going. I know that there was there was talk years ago about the Newton Blackmore Trail. We tried getting that, that going, but it didn't go anywhere. Is there still a push for that? We have, do we have to finish our people? <sighs> no, that is all. Is there still, I, I, and that I, mean, I don't know. Is there kind of like a line that's going to make that happen? And he would probably know because he's with the one of the clubs, so. Um, the Newton Blackmore Trail is probably the biggest hot button issue New London sees because that connects New London right to Green Bay pretty much. Um, the last time it was discussed for usage, the naturist pretty much shouted and laughed out the ATV clubs. They wanted it for hiking, biking, and horseback riding. And with ATVs growing in popularity, there's a bigger push for it, but I believe that comes from the county level to change what is and isn't allowed. So when that discussion would ever happen again in the future for maintenance up updates, um, because the county oversees the maintenance on that trail, that would have to be something discussed between the municipalities, the clubs, and the county, as well as public input. So I'm sure there would still be pushback from the naturist, but as myself, who drives New London to Green Bay, I think I've seen in probably 10, 15 years, uh, not even that many people on that trail. Well, I'll tell you what, we live, we live on Lake Erie Avenue, and um, that's a heavily trafficked pedestrian traveled trail. Is it? Yeah, it's okay. huge. We're talking now, it's getting busier and busier, and every year it's getting busier and busier. The people are walking as family members, they're walking their kids, they're walking their dogs, both sides of the road that lead down the trail. Um, Lakeshore drives the same way. It's, it, when, the, when the weather's decent, even in the winter time, they're using that. Our road a lot, not necessarily go down that trail, but a they're lot of the road going down that trail. Mm -hmm. And you know, in fact, just tonight, our neighbor was pushing his young kid around on his, teaching him how to ride a bicycle, mm -hmm. you know? and. It's not like, it, and believe me, I'm not opposed to ATV UTVs. I'm, not, I'm really not. But I'm just thinking in terms of you know, the safety. And they're not just naturists. They're family members. They're right. people that want to get out there and exercise. <coughs> Ride the bikes and get good outdoor exercise. Joggers, bicyclists, again, family members. And getting, even though, like you're talking about the horses, and if it got to the point where it's allowed, it better really be. It, it better be checked and double checked before that happens, because something's going, somebody's going to get hurt. I, and that's just what I'm and there are there are multi-use trails in northern Wisconsin where horse hikers and ATVs on the, are shared on the trail. But under the law, when you come up on the horseback riders, you would pull over, shut your engine off, wait for them to pass before you start your motor up and resume your ride. That you have that is re requirement. Yeah, no, I understand. I, I, I get it. You know, we're living in a busy world. Yeah, yep. we really are. Everybody there's also, there. yeah, there's also limits where I, I, I mean, Allegheny ordinance, I believe, and there's a couple other ordinances out there that specifically say that ATV, UTVs, when you come into contact either with a house or a pedestrian, that you have to slow down to 10 miles an hour. Snowmobiles are that way. When you're operating on a roadway and you come into contact with somebody that's either <coughs> walking, uh, you know, walking their dog or whatever, you have to slow down to 10 miles an hour. Um, so, and I know there are signs out there. Every this person's got to yield for this one. This person's got to yield for this one. And it's all yeah. kind of laid yeah. out. For I, don't more yeah. Yeah. I don't foresee yeah. that the, the ATVs are going to be allowed on on the Y wash or the new black market. I guess that's kind of one. I'm just kind of yeah. looking for that. Yeah, that. That's a whole yeah. separate yeah. entity altogether. Yeah. That, that trail, we got these trails. The Y wash trail is a gem. Yeah, I believe it. I invite all board members and everybody to watch. I don't foresee the Y wash ever being changed. No. Yeah. That that Stay the only thing that would ever possibly be changed in the future might be Newton Blackmore, 
but that's a different conversation outside of because it's brand new because it's new it's new and they're trying to get on before people well they were doing it in the 90s actually yeah. trying to get the trail access i know but you know that's kind of nice to have it uh, and I, I, again I, i'm not going to get into it that way but I'm, and I'm, again i'm not opposed to UTDs and APDs. they look fun mm -hmm. they do really look fun and i get it um, the biggest the biggest issue with using trails to connect municipalities is um county roads and i i i, I sympathize because uh, out of Gamey County put together, in my view, an ugly county ordinance. Um, where I primarily did my presentations in Wapaka County, Wapaka County said, you know what, we're going to leave it up to each individual municipality. County roads, if you want them, that's up to you. 45, 55 miles an hour, that's up to you. If you don't want them, then you've got to sign them as closed. And basically everyone in Wapaka County said, okay, 55 miles an hour, we got no problem with you on on uh, X from New London to Iwiga, on T from New London to Clintonville, or going out to Iola or Wapaka on G&E. You know, we got them all. Um, out of Gaming County really went above and beyond in its restriction and the, the permit use because it chokes off access from municipality to municipality. And it creates islands. That the only way you can go from Hortonville to Ellington now is to take a trailer because out of Gaming says, we feel that's too heavily traveled, sorry. But if you get enough municipalities supporting together, you could probably apport, approach Wapak, or out of Gamey County and say, we feel all of us municipalities together, we wanna make a change. But that's a different conversation for a different day, but it, it's just, you gotta play ball with what you got from out of Gamey County right now. And that is obeying the 35 mile an hour zones that are approved through them by each municipality. Does anyone have any other questions or concerns? I do. Um, it's kind of basically on, you know, and that, again, not against the PPG, but it's, it's got to do with, I know you mentioned about curfews. Um, and I get curfew means times a day, I get that. But when we talk about maybe Independence Day, Fourth of July, Halloween in our neighborhood is, and again, that's our neighborhood, but there's cars parking all along Nash. Our road is unbelievable. So I guess the thing is, maybe some of the major holidays there might have to be some consideration. Um, well, and, and if I get, so when I spoke with the, the chief over in New London, because um, he's helped me with this whole uh, project quite a bit, but. He said he can go days without seeing one over there. And some days he only sees one or two. And I know that I travel into New London quite a bit. And so I was in New London for, I don't know, maybe four hours yesterday running around doing errands and stuff like that. I saw one UTV. So he basically said to me, we, we put together this ordinance <coughs> and about 10% of our population use UTVs in our village. It's not a very high population amount of people. So I think what think people think are that, you know, and maybe years down the road, you know, once this is established and it's, you know, 10 years, but I don't know that you're really going to see a whole lot of UTVs that are going to be coming into town. You may see these rides <coughs> that are coming, you know, but right now they can't get really anywhere from here. No, I realize You know? That. I realize in, in, in I, I realize, have, yeah, I never realize that it's them. not going to be, a, you know, right. sometimes mm -hmm. in our mind we're getting this Yep. All of a sudden, we're going to see all this traffic. And I, I understand. I, and I, I, mean, I, I truly, I truly don't. I mean, I think that you're going to be. We as law enforcement, we can work an eight-hour shift, and we might not see one. Mm -hmm. You know, and in 24 hours, we might only see a small handful of them. Mm -hmm. You know, on the weekend, it might be a little bit different as different municipalities are opening them up to the public. Then you might see some of the rides that are coming through. I drove up to Clintonville on Saturday. And up on Highway 76 and F, there's that little bar there. I don't know if anybody knows where I'm talking, but there's that little that little bar right there. And it was so cool because there was like 15, 20 UTVs. So they're all UTVs, all parked in there. So they must have all been on a ride someplace, you know, because they're up there in the Wapaka County. So they really don't have a trouble getting around, but I, however, I don't think that was in Wapaka County. But um, but it was kind of cool just to see it. But that's what they're doing. They're getting in. 
They're going for their Sunday afternoon rides. They're abiding by the laws and the rules, and you know they're they're just trying to do things right. Thank you. Any other questions? I know that there's talk about tires and stuff like that. Um, somebody had made a comment um, about <coughs> the tires. Tires are made for gravel, dirt, and rocks. Um, Adam and I kind of were talking a little bit about different types of tires that are coming out, um, that they're making them more road. DOT compliant radial tires are the biggest up and coming item for ATVs and UTVs. Yeah. So there's a huge market for them. And then we had talked with, we spoke about a little bit about um, like different light packages that you can put on your ATVs and your UTVs so that you're compliant. So if you have an old ATV that doesn't have brake lights or whatever, um, or even directionals, uh, you can go as far as getting those added on too. So there's so many things out there that you can do to make them compliant. Anything else that I missed, Adam? Uh, one, um, I'll, I'll address the board and, and the uh, people. Um, the passenger seating laws, I don't know if anyone heard about that. Um, that was changed back in uh, 2019. Um, your old style ATV, just the single saddle style seat, your old 1996 player sportsman, I'll just throw that out there. They, a lot of manufacturers have what are uh, passenger trunks. They look like they're a backrest that you'd mount on, onto your uh, luggage rack on the back. Those are illegal now as of 2019. Um, you can only have a passenger if it's a factory-made touring model. The longer wheelbase, the passenger seat, it has to come from factory. Um, same for the UTVs. You can't just throw somebody in the box of your Polaris Ranger. You got to have a factory seat for people to ride in. If it's a bolt-on aftermarket, they're all legal. Um, I myself, me and my wife, we had two Polaris Sportsmen that we did the bolt-on seats for years. Completely safe, I love them. But we had to sell our machines and go buy these new touring models because something we enjoy doing with our kids and we wanted to be compliant with the law because um, I've been getting reports, people up north right now, the DNR or Sheriff's Patrol stop you. It's uh, about a $300 fine and they make you go right back to your trailer. You are done. So the same can be done around here. You get caught with a passenger on an illegal seat, uh, that can be up to a three hundred dollar. It depends on the officer's mood. Um, yeah, it, you, you get clemency sometimes. You get a warning or you get the fine, but it's usually back to your house, back to your trailer. You're done. So um, keep that in mind with seating. If it's a bolt-on aftermarket, no go. As far as like enforcement, so the game wardens that are down here, they can. You can stop. Um, Allegheny County can stop, and then anybody from my department can stop. So they can enforce all of the the, the state laws. And there's a whole section in our bond book that's specifically for state statute 2333. And there is there's some pretty stiff penalties for violating. Anybody from board <coughs> any questions? Hmm? I had one, but he answered it. I was wondering why Wapaka you could drive around. And it, yeah, the difference in the county. Wapaka was very <coughs> open and susceptible to um, the growing recreational motorsports enthusiasts and hobbyists. Um, they were seeing the trend too that, um, and, and this has been brought to my attention, the older crowd that were into the motorcycling, they can't ride or balance like they used to, so they got into side by sides. They take their grandkids out with them for ice cream in them now. <coughs> It really is the new big trend. So Wapaka just, they left it up. They trusted the municipalities to do the right thing. And same for Sean O'Connor. <coughs> they were the, the same approach. So who's our county rep if somebody wants to? Dan. Dan. The Jedlo. Dan, Dan, Dan the Jedlo. Oh, he just got elected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he's our county rep if anybody wants to follow it up from that point forward. You know, I just have one observation I'd like to share. Uh, how many of you have taken the trail from Land O'Lakes to Waters Meet, Michigan? Anybody here? 
going north? On Snowmobile. On Snowmobile. Yeah, yeah. Snowmobile here. Part of it. Okay. Uh, it goes right past my place. It's a constant ripped up because of the ATVs and UTVs that go through there, and it's a headache for maintenance. They're out there plowing or leveling all the time. So, why a wash trail? I seriously doubt it will ever become a UTV, ATV. It would have to be approved by the state. Yeah, yeah right. That, so. That's a different conversation. Yeah. yeah. That, yeah. my opinion, it'll never happen. Yeah. yeah. I would agree. It was, it was put together, the same thing with the Blackburn. It was put together with uh, Grant Mundy, and it specifically had purposes that it was for, and it's going to take an enormous amount of <coughs> support or something to be able to train, to, to be able yeah. to open that up to UTVs. The county's looking more right. connecting the two trails rather than. And the county doesn't have the funds to be maintaining and fixing and everything <coughs> else. I mean, they're, they're looking at these walking trails. They're looking to have support from community members and organizations to do cleanup and going in and cutting down brush and everything else. So yeah. that's not something they're going to want to do. Fixing. So just thinking in the winter, like I use my plow, plow, plow the bar, would there be any possible thing about like requesting special permission in the winter instead of trailering? It's already team? allowed. It, it's already allowed in our ordinance to allow you to do it because we allow it now. But to get from my house to the bar? That, um, that's covered under state law 2333, snow plowing is an act of husbandry. Yeah. Typically from your starting point, I believe the state allows a two mile radius of working with a plow yep. and you've got to have your amber <coughs> visible from the front and the rear. Yes, he's correct. Yep. Any other questions? <laughs> I do have one question. Would golf carts ever be an option? Or Probably not. Um, and, and I'm not really sure. Um, problem with the golf carts are the golf carts do a maximum speed of 14, 12 to 14 miles per hour. So then when you have traffic and the way that we have the reckless driving calls that we get per day, we're, it's, so gonna, it's gonna turn into a road rage incident. Um, some, of the <coughs> tires, some of the tires on there too, I mean, there's, there's some agencies that allow them, I know Brilliant does, what was it? Rib Mountain. Rib Mountain, but you have to have the slow moving signs on, on the backs of them. I think the Bridge um, of Fremont does. And I think that you have to pay a special fee to be able to Fremont operate them because you can't register them. Mm -hmm. so, right. <laughs> so <laughs> that would be a question for them. I mean, I, I don't know. Fremont. Fremont. Any other questions? Uh, when when do you anticipate the rules opening for driving on? Well, like I said in the beginning, um, there's quite a few hoops that we have to hop okay. through. So we'll, we have this meeting, then we have the meeting on the 21st, am I correct? Sure. Yeah, on the 21st, the board, this board here will make that decision whether to move forward. I can't, uh, I can't apply for the permit until the board approves it. So once the board approves it, um, then I'm able to move forward with um, applying for the permits through the county. We're going to get the permission from the state. Um, we have quite a bit of paperwork that we have to submit. I don't know how long it takes to get back from the approval from the highway commissioner. Um, you know, we could start purchasing the signs and have them all there. Once I get permission <coughs> from him, then it's a matter of the DPW putting up the signs and we open it up. So I'm anticipating. Maybe June? Yeah, depends on how fast we get the permission. Any other questions? I'd just like to thank the board for taking a look at this. I mean, I've been ATV and UTV and all my, UTV and all my life, and uh, it's a fun family sport, and I just See the village get in this get behind it. And we want to thank all of you for coming and listening and voicing your opinions and your concerns. 
And if there are no other questions, we will make a, have a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we are now adjourned.